Hello, I'm Dr. Marla Shapiro. If you're a woman who's bothered by hot flashes and you're reluctant to take menopausal hormone therapy because of your personal concerns, well, you're in the right place because joining me today to discuss this very important topic is Dr. Pauline Mackey. Welcome, Pauline. Thank you. So Pauline is Professor of Psychiatry and Psychology at the University of Illinois in Chicago. So this is all too common, women who are fearful of taking menopausal hormone therapy and are very confused about, are there any options for me? That's right. The data do show that women are confused and they're seeking top information. So the North American Menopause Society convened a panel of experts to review the scientific literature to try to understand using the best evidence possible, randomized trials, what is the best option for a woman who doesn't want to use hormone therapy to treat her hot flashes. So many women will end up going to their local drugstore or a health food store and reach for something over the counter thinking that it's natural, it's alternative, natural means without side effects, and they're there off and running. What information do we have about this? You're right, that is the first go-to place for women. They go to their natural food store, to the grocery store, and they pick up a variety of botanicals. We reviewed the evidence for the botanicals, and the data were actually quite surprising. The conclusion of our expert panel was that there really was insufficient evidence to suggest that any one of these over-the-counter treatments, whether it be soy isoflavones, black cohosh, or any of the other preparations, might actually do any better than placebo. There was, however, one suggestion that perhaps future research might support, mm -hmm. and that's for an over-the-counter supplement called S-Equal, which is a product of soy. And in that case, what was the benefit like? If we look at menopausal hormone therapy as helping nine out of 10 women in terms of really tremendous hot flashes, where does that fall? The treatment effect for S-isoflavones is much less than mm -hmm. that for estradiol. Soy is a weak estrogen, mm -hmm. and its effect is around 20 to 30% above placebo, so not much of a signal. But again, we thought if there's a signal, it's for that, but we need more data. Absolutely. What about medication that your physician will prescribe to you, but is not hormonal? The Food and Drug Administration approved the first non-hormonal treatment for vasomotor symptoms, hot flashes and night sweats, mm -hmm. and that's low-dose paroxetine, a very low-dose antidepressant, which is used in a dose that's much lower than the doses used for depression. So if we use 20 to 40 milligrams for depression, we're looking at what dose here? Less than 10 milligrams? Less than 10 milligrams, yes. And what were the findings? Uh, compared to baseline, the low-dose paroxetine decreased hot flashes by 40 and 60 percent. Now that's the absolute effect overall. When compared to placebo, that's about one and a half fewer hot flashes per day. Okay, there are other medications that are off-label, so to speak, that individuals will use other low-dose antidepressants. Where do we go with that? So we concluded that although there is some evidence to suggest that other antidepressants are helpful, that really people should go with the labeled product. They are used off-label, though, you're correct. Absolutely. And then there are some older medications that we use for completely de other indications, anti-seizure medications, right. blood pressure medications. Where do we stand with that? So gabapentin is one of those drugs that's used off-label. It is effective. It decreases hot flashes more than, say, a placebo pill. However, women don't like it. Their quality of life decreases quite a bit because of the side effects. And that is? Well, they, they get dizzy. They uh, don't feel themselves. They have a lot of psychological effects. They have problems sleeping. Their general well-being is not as good when they're on the gabapentin. And clonidine? Clonidine is the same thing. Women, it is effective when prescribed off-label for hot flashes, but it's not as effective as the hormone therapy, and it has adverse side effects that women don't like, the dizziness, the overall malaise. So for a woman with hot flashes, who can take menopausal hormone therapy but is fearful, what's the best route for her to take? Yeah, so the best, the gold standard is hormone therapy, right? But for the woman who can't or chooses not to do it, in addition to those um, drugs that we've just described, there are mind-body therapies that were actually ranked to be very highly effective. One of those is cognitive behavior therapy. So cognitive behavior therapy is a way of changing our thoughts about hot flashes, 
which changes the way that our, we respond in terms of stress responses when a hot flash is coming on. And it actually has been shown to be highly significantly better than non-CBT types of interventions, non-cognitive behavior therapy, so that's equivalent of the placebo, and the effects last quite a long time. So this is something a woman can get in a group setting, or there's actually a self-guided cognitive behavior therapy module for women. So when we think about the other things that are out there, paced respirations, cooling devices, mm -hmm. acupuncture, hypnosis, biofeedback, there's a whole plethora that's, that's out right. there. Where do we stand with the evidence? Is there any evidence for biofeedback or paced respirations or acupuncture? So biofeedback, paced respiration, and acupuncture were no better than the control conditions. So we do not recommend that. However, the surprise was hypnosis. Hypnosis was uh, graded to be actually a recommended therapy for women. And that's very interesting because a colleague of mine whose wife is a um, breast cancer survivor came up to me and she said, Pauline, you really need to study hypnosis. It's the only thing I've used that works. Mm -hmm. And here we go. Here's the evidence. It's quite remarkable. It is quite remarkable. So given the fact that there are some options that are available, it is good news. There are some choices. Yes, there are choices. And we also know what women shouldn't do. Which is? There's no evidence to support exercise or yoga or low-fat diet for hot flashes, though we know they're very good for other things. Right, so we're going to support that we'll for other things. We'll support it for other things, but, but not, not for hot, hot flashes. flashes. And mm -hmm. that's important to know as well. It is. And for women who smoke? they got to stop the smoking because that smoking exacerbates their hot flashes and actually brings on menopause a year and a half or two early. Important information. And for yeah. women with high caffeine or alcohol, are these triggers as well that they can avoid in their lifestyle? They can avoid those. Yes, that's right. And each woman should keep track of her own triggers and know what for her triggers a hot flash. Though therapies that focus primarily on the triggers alone don't really work that well. So it may be that you need a combination of some of these approaches. That's right. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, Pauline. Thank you.